Hello there and um, welcome to this mathematics tutorial presented to you by O3 Schools Jambap. Well, I've always been telling you the special properties of your O3 Schools Jambap and I won't stop this time. Your O3 Schools Jambap is very, very useful to all students writing jam. Not just because it provides you with past questions, which you can, you know, use to aid in your learning, but it also in how these past questions are presented to you. The presentation is unique. You can get past questions anywhere or nowhere will you get one as unique or as well designed to aid you as the O3 Schools Jam app. Now, some of the special features of this app include um, the question search feature, which lets you search for questions simply by putting in a keyword or the topic name or any particular thing unique to that topic. So if you search for something unique, in within a particular subject, the app brings out all the questions which Jamba said in which that particular keyword or topic name appears. It also has other features such as within the past questions, it has a mock exam setting, which when you install this app within your laptop, so you're actually able to see an exact replica of what you will see on the day you take your jump. So you can actually use it to practice and get used to the system and also know what to do and what not to do. For example, you do not submit after one question. That's an obvious thing that you should know, but which would not be obvious to some people if they have never actually tried the CBT before. So the Auto Schools Jam app gives you access to this CBT. So you can write mock jam as many times as you want. The official one is just one jam mock, which some of you have written or will write depending on when you watch this video. However, that doesn't mean it gives you many chances to do it no however with the auto school jam app you can actually write this mock exam as many times as you desire and as a result you get way more comfortable with the system so these are some of the good things the auto school jam app has for you it even lets you choose the number of questions you want to answer choose the time you could even actually choose the topics you want the questions to come out from so that you could say, okay, yes, I'm only ready for this topic. I've not read this one yet. So within these questions, please only give me questions from this topic. It has the settings there and it is very, very easy to maneuver and easy to use. So get your app. And once you install it, you have to activate it. Activating is very important. Without the activation, you're not able to enjoy the full features of this app. And the activation costs 2,500 Naira only extremely cheap for these features now you can activate and activating has different ways well you could pay online you could use google play and you could also use transfer any of these methods works perfectly fine and means your app will be activated for you assured there's no gamble once you send this money you can either if you're using transfer you could use you could send a receipt to the phone number which is in the app while if you are using Paystack that's paying on them to ATM card, you never have to do that. It gets activated for you instantly. So your app is very easy to use. Let me get it, activate it, and you are one step closer towards doing very well within your exam. And with that, let's start this mathematics class. We shall be looking at polynomials. Now, what are polynomials? Well, Polynomials are like the higher form of your algebra. Your algebra is basically mathematics where you are using letters to represent unknowns or variables. Now, typically, normal algebra deals with linear variables where you're having things along the lines of x to the power 1, if there's no power there. So x plus 5 is a linear algebra. And as you know, if you're not having x squared plus 3x minus 5 is quadratic. But what then happens if you are dealing with things along the lines of x cubed? Once you get above power of 2, you are now set to be dealing with polynomials. Now, please note, so polynomials have no upper limits. You can have x to the power 4, x to the power 5, well, as much as possible. But please note that for the scope of your jam, it tends to deal mostly with x to the power of 3. So... That's what we shall be looking at within this topic of polynomials. Now, once you start the topic of polynomials, what are the things you start with? 
Well, there are the simple things which you've done before, which are addition, subtraction, and also your multiplication of these algebra. You've learned this before. But the one beautiful thing we shall learn here, which you've known before, is division. So in this topic, we'll actually look at division of polynomials. So we'll learn how to divide. And unlike the previous in algebra, in algebra we are dividing most times, it's simply simplified, then you're able to cancel out. In this case, we're not doing that. We're actually just going straight on with the division. So we shall try to learn how to divide polynomials. Then we can also find the roots of a polynomial. The root of a polynomial simply means we have so many polynomials. So for example, we have x cubed plus 5x squared minus 3x plus 2 equals 0. To solve this and get the answers, well, first things first, we always start with what is known as try and error method. In try and error method, we try to guess one answer to this polynomial. So we try to guess one root first of all. And from there, we'll be able to reduce this polynomial into a quadratic equation. Only after reducing to the quadratic equation, how in they solve using the normal method which we have learned in the quadratic equation video. So we find the roots of the polynomial. We start by using try and error method, which of course we shall see when we solve examples. And then that root will help us reduce it by dividing into the quadratic equation, which can then be solved. And this trend error method will make use of something known as the factor theorem. Now, there's a factor theorem, and there's also one called a remainder theorem. For either of them, how does it work? Well, the idea is quite simple. If you are given a certain value, let's say x minus 1, and told to test whether x minus 1 is a factor of this expression, or it will give you a remainder, the method is exactly the same. What do you do? You equate x minus 1 to 0, you equate x minus 1 to 0, and that means x equals to 1. On doing this, you take this value of 1 and then substitute it into this equation. Such that you'll be having 1 cubed plus 5 times 1 squared minus 3 times 1 plus 2. 1 cubed is 1. 1 squared is 1. So 5 times 1 is 5. Minus 3 times 1 is 3 plus 2. 1 plus 5 is 6. 6 minus 3 is 4. Sorry, 6 minus 3 is 3. And 3 plus 2 is 5. Now, like I said, factor theorem and remainder theorem are related. How? If my answer when I equate this is not zero, that means it is not a factor. So it's only a factor when I put in this number and it gives me zero. That's how I know it's a factor. However, if it is not a factor, that must mean that when I divide, there should be a remainder. So if I'm being asked to find just the remainder of the equation, I don't have to go through the long journey of actually dividing. Whatever number I get here when I put it in is automatically my remainder. So the rule is if you have been asked to find the remainder, you don't have to bother going through the long process of division. No. So we put this in, and whatever you get at the end of the day gives you the remainder. If it gave you zero, that means it's a factor. And you should know this already, but if my polynomials I'm dividing are P and Q, then it's going to give me a quotient. The answer I get is my quotient and whatever is remaining is called my remainder. So this, if I want to get the remainder, I can simply do this and get my remainder theorem. If I want to get the quotient, which is the division, after I try to go through the process of dividing. Now, the process of dividing cannot easily be explained, you know, without a practical example. So at this point in time, as we go to get our old race schools jump up and try to solve some questions. Now please note, addition, subtraction, multiplication. These are very, very easy. We will not really treat it here. Because as you are aware, I was having 2x cubed minus 2 minus, let's say, 3x cubed. I know they can subtract because they have the same powers. 2 minus 3 becomes minus 1x cubed. That's very simple. Addition and subtraction is very easy. Multiplication is 
quite as easy. 2x cubed times 3x cubed as you are away will be 2 times 3 is 6. x raised to the power 3 plus 3 is 6. So we'll not treat multiplication, addition, and subtraction. We are trying to start on division. Then we'll look at how to get the roots. And we shall also take a look at factor and remainder theorems. So let's go see some questions on our O3 Schools Jam app. Okay, my first question is from the year 2008. This is question number 13. And it says, if 2x squared minus kx minus 12 is divisible by x minus 4. Now, automatically, they've told me that 2x squared minus kx minus 12 can actually be divided is divisible by x minus 4. That means if x minus 4 goes into it, there is no remainder. We want to get the value of k. Here, we use what I called factor theorem. And what I say you do, take what you are dividing by. I'm dividing by x minus 4. And I will equate this to 0, which must mean that x equals to 4. And I'll put this value into what I was dividing. That means instead of 2x squared minus kx minus 12, I'm going to now be having 2 instead of x, x is 4. 4 squared minus k instead of x, that's 4, minus 12. And I know because it said it cannot try divide it. The remainder must be 0. So, 4 squared is 16. 16 times 2 is 32. Minus 4k minus 12 equals 0. So, leave minus 4k over here. Um, take minus 12 there. Minus 12 becomes plus 12. Take plus 32 over there becomes minus 32. So, minus 4k equals to 12 minus 32 is minus 20 over minus 4 over minus 4. K must be equal to 5, which as we can see is option B. You see, this is how you do it. If you are told it can actually divide it, that means the remainder must be 0. Simply put in your variable and you get your answer very very easy okay i have my next question this one is from the year 2007 question number 17. 2007 question 17. now this one tries to come with a graph which you can see and well from the nature of this graph i have Something like this. So that here is minus 2. Here is also minus 2. Here is minus 1. Here is 1. Now, because my graph curves three times, you know, down, up, down, then goes back up, I know I'm dealing with a cubic graph. And cubic graphs have three roots. How do I get my roots? The places where they cut the x axis. That means x equals to minus 2. It also cuts at minus 1 and also cuts at 1. So these are my three roots. But that's not what the question wants from me. The question is asking me, what should the equation be that formed these three roots? Well, I can get that easily. Remember, these are all factors, right? Yes, yeah, so how do I put them to that proper form? Bring minus 2 this way. That becomes s plus 2 equals to 0. Bring minus 1 this way, x plus 1 equals to 0. Bring plus 1 this way, x minus 1 equals to 0. Now, therefore, I know that x plus 2, x plus 1, and x minus 1 are factors. That's right way. Factors are numbers that can multiply to give you the number. So if these are all the factors, it means that if I multiply them, I should get my original number. As a result, we're going to say, let's start with s plus 2 
times x plus 1. I'll multiply these two first and multiply by the last one. Let's multiply, shall we? To open your brackets easily. First times first, x squared, x times 1, x, 2 times x, 2x, and 2 times 1, 2. Giving me x squared plus 1x plus 2x is 3x plus 2. Now we're not yet done. We've multiplied these two. Now to multiply by the last one, that gives me x squared plus 3x plus 2 times x minus 1. And repeating the process, x squared times x is x cubed. x squared times minus 1 is minus x squared. 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times minus 1 is minus 3x. 2 times x is 2x. And 2 times minus 1 is minus 2. Therefore, I'll be having x cubed minus x squared plus 3x squared is plus 2x squared. Minus 3x plus 2x is minus x. And then minus 2. So quite simply, opening our all three schools jam up how much time we can see that our answer must be y equals x cubed plus 2x squared minus x minus 2, which is option B. So you see, very, very easy. Just remember the idea of the steps and proceed accordingly. So let's move on. So our third question, this one being from the year 2006. This is from 2006. And this is question number 43. And it says, find the value of k if the expression kx cubed plus x squared minus 5x minus 2 leaves a remainder of 2 when divided by 2x plus 1. Now this is just like our first example. Just like in this case, rather than being a factor, this one has a remainder. But the steps are exactly the same. What do I do? I equate 2x plus 1 to 0. And as a result, 2x equals minus 1. And over 2, over 2, x equals minus 1 over 2. Next up, I'll put this value of x into this original expression. Meaning I'll be having k into minus 1 over 2 cubed. Plus, this is x squared, so that's minus 1 over 2 squared. Minus 5x, which comes 5 times minus 1 over 2, minus 2. And because I know the remainder is 2, it must be equal to 2. This is very, very straightforward. Well then, open your brackets. Minus 1 over 2 cubed. Minus 1 times minus 1 times minus 1 is minus 1. So 1 times k is k. Then 2 cubed. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. Next up, we want to square this. Minus times minus is plus. 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 is 4. Next up, this minus out here times this minus inside gives me plus. 5 times 1 is 5 over 2. Then minus 2 equals 2. Now, um, there are different ways I could proceed from here. One of the easiest ways, and my personal favorite, is to make everything linear. And, you know, get rid of these denominators so I can add easily. How do I do so? You multiply by the LCM of everything here. And the LCM is 8. And so I'll multiply every single thing here by 8. And so I'm away. 8 times k over 8. 8 cancels 8. I'll be left with minus k. Plus 8 times 1 over 4. 8 divided by 4 is 2. Next up, 8 times 5 over 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 times 5 is 20. Next, 8 times minus 2 is minus 16. And 8 times plus 2 is plus 6.
team. So you see, from here, it becomes very, very easy. Collect that teams. Minus k equals, or we could just add up this side first. 2 plus 20 is 22. 22 minus 16 is plus 6. And that gives me equals to 16. And so minus k equals 16 minus 6, which gives me 10. Remember, I want to find k, not minus k. So divide both sides by minus 1, minus 1. K equals minus C, which is option C. So we see one more time the steps are easy and straightforward. Remember that theorem and factor theorem are related. Just keep in mind if the question had to do with factor theorem, if it was a factor, my answer would be zero. But if it's a remainder, my answer must become that remainder. All right, next question is from 2006. This time, question number 38. This one is very straightforward. Find the roots of x cubed minus 2x squared plus 5x. Sorry, this is minus 5x plus 6 equals 0. Now, this is where I say it one more time. We have to start with trial and error method. How do we do trial and error? We have to guess. We say, if this test, if root is 1, let's find out if 1 is a root. And how do we do that? We're going to put 1 into this and see if it gives me 0. Try it. 1 going there becomes 1 cubed. Minus 2 times 1 squared, minus 5 times 1, plus 6 equals to 0. 1 cubed is 1. 2 times 1 squared, 1 times 1 is 1, so 2 times 1 is 2. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 6. Let's test if it will give me 0. 1 minus 2 is minus 1. Minus 1 minus 5 is minus 6, and minus 6 plus 6 is 0. Therefore, I know that x must be equal to 1. That is my first root. And at this point in time, you should please know that the proper method of solving this question does not involve you continuing to try, to try and error. But in jump, yes, easy thing. The questions are always objective, right? Yes. So you can go to your options and check. Option A has 1, 2, and minus 3. That could be the answer. Option B has minus 1, minus 2, and 3. Cannot be the answer. I know 1 must be included. Option C has minus 1, 2, and minus 3. Also cannot be the answer. I know 1 positive must be included. Right? Yes. So, option D has 1, minus 2, and 3. So, again, that might be the answer. So, yeah, the trick, therefore, in Jambis, after getting one answer, Use the answer to eliminate as many options as possible. Then, instead of going through the normal method of solving, use try and error a second time, but this time, testing the numbers within the options. That means right now, option A says I should be having plus 1 as one option and plus 2 as the other one. While option D, which is the only other viable option, says I should be having plus 1 and minus 2. How can I tell which is correct? Simply by testing if the root equals to 2. If the root equals to positive 2, then I know A is correct. But if positive 2 does not work, then I know D must be correct. So I don't have to go through the proper long solving, which I'm going to show you, by the way. But right now, let's just see this. That means I'll put 2 into this expression. That becomes 2 cubed minus 2 times 2 squared minus 5 times 2 plus 6. 2 cubed is 8. Two, 2 squared is 4. 4 times 2 is also 8. 5 times 2 here is 10 plus 6. 8 minus 8 is 0. 0 minus 10 is minus 10. Minus 10 plus 6 is 4, which means 2 is not a root. And automatically, without any other solving, 
if I know 1 must be and positive 2 cannot be, I know the answer must be D. 1 minus 2. And what was the third option there? Positive 3. But again, let's test it and confirm. Just in case we are still doubting. Let's test minus 2 now. That means I'll be having minus 2 cubed minus 2 into minus 2 squared minus 5 into minus 2 plus 6 minus 2 cubed minus times minus times minus remains minus 2 times 2 times 2 is 8 next one minus 2 squared is 4 4 times minus 2 is minus 8 minus 5 times minus 2 is plus 10 and that is plus 6 minus 8 minus 8 minus 16 minus 16 plus 10 minus 6 minus 6 plus 6 is 0 so you see i know therefore that x must be equal to minus 2 so 1 minus 2 and 3 and see this is the shorter method of solving it only applicable to jam students because again nobody marks your solving nobody's going to check your step and know if you followed the normal steps to get the answer or if you simply guessed so this is a shorter way just once you get the first option first answer eliminate any option not having it then if two options are still contention try another number so as to help eliminate the next option that is how you do it fast but then the proper solving of this question is that after getting this first one create the factor by saying therefore bring this plus one to the left x minus one equals zero so we know that x minus one is a factor now once you know this the next step typically involves dividing now like i said we have to divide and in this method of long division which we all learned in primary school we know that what we want to divide goes under here s cubed minus 2s squared minus 5x plus 6 and what we want to use to divide comes here why would i put our answers up there so let's test the division we use just this first one to divide just this first one that's how we divide s cubed divided by s is x squared obviously so then we'll use this to multiply this again s squared times s s cubed s squared times minus one minus x squared then subtract after getting the division method the first variable divided by the first one here whatever you get put it up here as your quotient there is that quotient to multiply everything that you should have used to divide so let's subtract s cubed minus s cubed is zero minus 2x squared minus minus x squared minus 2x squared minus minus x squared minus times minus is plus minus 2 plus 1 is minus x squared then bring these two down minus 5x plus 6. now we are not done how do i know that because x squared is greater than x so i can divide again minus x squared divided by x minus x squared over x must be minus x I can always check it here now minus x squared over x x can solve the square so minus x minus x times x minus x squared minus x times minus 1 minus times minus is plus x and then we we'll subtract again minus x squared minus minus x squared is 0 that's good minus 5x minus plus x minus times plus is minus minus 5x minus x is minus 6x plus 6. okay the one last division because i still have x here minus 6x over x x cancel each other out i'm left with minus 6. and therefore minus 6 times s minus 6x minus 6 times minus 1 plus 6 and if you subtract everything gives you zero that confirms that s minus 1 is a factor 
and tells you that your remainder was s or rather your quotient sorry your quotient your remainder is zero your quotient was x squared minus x minus six once you have this all you have to do is actually solve it solve this equation which is a quadratic equation by simply equating it to zero how do you solve you can easily factorize if, you don't, if you've forgotten this check out the video on quadratic equations x squared times minus six is minus six x squared two things i will multiply to give me minus six and add to give me minus one if you think about it are going to be minus three and plus two minus three times plus two is minus six minus three plus two is minus one remember the short method i taught you in quadratic equations is once you get these two numbers simply change the signs this becomes plus three and this becomes minus two that means my answers are one minus two and plus three so you see with proper solving this is how we always get the answer after getting the first factor by trial and error we divide put it a quadratic equation which we then solve and gives us our answer however in the case of jam when finding your roots it's always easier to just use try and error to eliminate your options and get your answer all right i hope that's understood let's move on that was our fourth question let's try a fifth one this one is from the year 2005 and this was question 14. so it says a polynomial in x that means the variable should be x whose zeros are minus 2 minus 1 and 3. When they tell you the zeros of a polynomial, they also mean the roots of a polynomial, which means the three answers are minus 2, minus 1, and 3. They want us to get the polynomial. Now, the method of this is always simple. If you know your roots, you can get your original question simply by saying, if x equals to minus 2 for the first one, bring minus 2 to the left, x plus 2 must be equal to 0. As my first factor if x equals to minus one bring minus one to the left s plus one must be equal to zero second factor if x equals to three then x minus three must be equal to zero said factor which means i can get the equation by saying x plus two times x plus one times x minus three very straightforward that's how you get your equation when given the roots but as usual we'll multiply step by step let's start with x plus 2 times x plus 1. x times x is x squared x times 1 is x 2 times x is 2x and 2 times 1 is 2 giving me x squared x plus 2x is 3x plus 2. So I've multiplied the first two, and I'll then use that answer, which is s squared plus 3x plus 2, to multiply the last factor, which is x minus 3. So let's do it. s squared times x is x cubed. s squared times minus 3 is minus 3x squared. Next, 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times minus 3 is minus 9x. Then last but not least, 2 times x is 2x. And 2 times minus 3 is minus 6. So we are pretty much done here. Yeah? I'll be having x cubed. Minus 3 plus 3 is 0. So my x squared coefficient is gone entirely. Minus 9x plus 2x is minus 7x, and that is minus 6. When I check my options, that is option D. So you see, I'll keep on repeating. These are very simple. 
you simply have to be careful and you'll be able to get all your answers for polynomials okay time for our sixth question this one is also from 2005 but this is question number 13 and this one is division we are simply being told to divide 6x squared minus 13x plus 5 by 2x minus 1. Please note that if we were told it was a factor, we would know whether I want to equate. Then also, if we were told to find the remainder or to test whether it's a factor, we would equate. Or here we are told to divide. If I want to just divide and try to get the answer. I have done one division before, but it was part of a second, different question. Let's see division. The idea is always simple. Your power here, your variable x within your division symbol must have a power which is either greater than or equal to that of the power outside. So, as I was having x cube here, x squared cannot divide x cube. No, we'll stop here. But because I'm having two here and this is one, two is greater than one. So we divide 6x squared over 2x. 2 year 1, 22, 6 is 3. x cancels this square here. So I'm left with 3x. Write down your answer at the top here. They use this answer to multiply everything here. 3x times 2x, 6x squared. 3x times minus 1, minus 3x. Then just like we learned in primary school, we subtract. 6x squared minus 6x squared is 0. I remember if you divide and when you subtracted, your first number does not leave. They've made a mistake. They always end up equal. Next, minus 13x minus minus 3x. Minus times minus is plus. Minus 13x minus 3x is minus 10x plus 5. Now, again, test your powers. This is x, this is x. They are equal. So, yes, again, they can divide. Minus 10x over 2x. x here is 1, x here is 1. 2 here is 1, 22 minus 10 is minus 5. So, minus 5 times 2x is minus 10x. Minus 5 times minus 1 is plus 5. Now, both of them are exactly the same. I mean that if they subtract, I must get nothing. And as a result, I can see that my quotient when I divide is 3x minus 5. So check your options. And that is simply option B. So you see, solving polynomials, I will repeat again, is very, very easy and straight forward your methods are quite constant okay let's stop have a new question this time from the year 2000 and this is question number 19 and this is i believe my seventh question yes and it says if x minus 1 x plus 1 and x minus 2 are factors of a polynomial I'm to find A, B, and C. If x minus 1, x plus 1, and x minus 2 are factors of a polynomial given by ax cubed plus bs squared plus cx minus 1. I'm to find A, B, and C. Well, don't stress yourself much. Simply ask yourself, okay, I know all the factors then. Why don't I just get the equation by multiplying? That would be very, very easy. x minus 1 times x plus 1. x times x, x squared. x times 1 is x. Minus 1 times x is minus x. Minus 1 times plus 1 is minus 1. That will give me x squared. x minus x is 0. We have to use minus 1. So, x squared minus 1 times x minus 2. 
S squared times X is X cubed. S squared times minus 2 is minus 2X squared. All right. Next, minus 1 times X is minus X. Minus 1 times minus 2 is plus 2. And that means that my equation must be X cubed minus 2x squared minus x plus 2 but then compare let's put this here this is what i got as my equation but they said their own equation what i'm comparing it to is ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx minus 1 so how can i make this turn to this form because if i look at this now i'm having plus 2 here but when I want to compare, I'm supposed to be having minus 1 there. Therefore, the simple way to turn plus 2 into minus 1 is by dividing it by minus 2. Plus divided by minus, minus 2 over 2, 1. You see, that's the way I can do that. Which means I'm going to divide every single thing. Because in mathematics, you not know, just divide parts. You divide everything by minus 2. So over here, I was having 1 on top before. 1 over minus 2 leaves me with minus 1 over 2 x cubed. Next, minus over minus is plus. 2 over 2 is 1. So that will be x squared. Minus over minus is plus. That will be 1 over 2x. Then plus over minus is minus. 2 over 2 is 1. So you see, if I compare this time, plus cx minus 1. Everything works perfectly fine. Minus 1 is here. x squared is here. And it's positive. x is here also positive. And this is this. Which must mean that a is minus 1 over 2. b is the number here. Since there's no number, there will no b. It must be 1. And c is 1 over 2. If I check my options, I should be having minus 1 over 2, 1, and 1 over 2, which is option A. So you see, I've said it, and I'll continue to say it. The solving is very, very simple. Okay. So let us proceed. This time... Another question on division from the year 1998, question 12. Let's truly get this division down. This one says I'm um, to divide 2x cubed plus 11x squared plus 17x plus 6 by 2x plus 1. Those I'm dividing. Now, there's no need to panic. Division is still quite simple. I will divide first element here by first element here. I know this power theory is greater than the power here, which is 1. So let's start division. 2x cubed over 2x. 2 cancels 2. x cubed over x is x squared. Once I get that first answer, I use this answer to multiply everything I'm dividing by. So, x squared times 2x is 2x cubed. x squared times plus 1 is x squared. Once I multiply, next I subtract. Now, subtracting is simple. 2x cubed minus 2x cubed is 0. And that is very, very important to division. Once you divide it and you subtract, the first thing or the backmost thing, if you prefer, is in that the leftwardmost value was always subtract itself and become zero. Next up, 11x squared minus, you know, 1x squared. That will give me 10x squared plus 17x plus 6. So again, we divide first only, divided by first. My first now is 10x squared, and it's dividing 2x. x will cancel the squared. 2 into 10 is 5. So I'm left with 5 x now i don't want to stress myself much 
I want to take on my options here. And I will know, okay, only two terms have x squared as the beginning of the answer. That's A having x squared plus 5x plus 6. And D having x squared minus 5x plus 6. But I've gotten my second term as plus 5x. And only A can be my answer right now. Because A is x squared plus 5x plus 6. This is the only one that has these first two terms agreeing with me. So automatically, this is my answer. And this is what I keep on emphasizing in JAM. When working with JAM, always look at your options. Don't oversolve. Don't solve more than you have to. This was obviously going to be my answer. Because even if I finish and I get the plus this, it will not change anything. Only one option has these two parameters. Except another option was maybe saying x squared plus 5x plus 8. Then I would have to solve until I get my third variable. I will not compare 6 and 8 to know which is correct. But Jamb doesn't want to stress you that much. They know they give you a little amount of time. So in their questions most times, in their options, once you've solved part way, if you are solving for three things, after getting two most times, you can try to realize, okay, there's no need for the third one because only one option is agreeing with me. And if only one option is agreeing with me, that must be my answer. So you see, I don't have to continue from here. But just to teach you how to finish dividing, if you have to, I will. What do we do? 5x times 2x, 10x squared. 5x times 1 is 5x. Subtract. 10x squared minus 10x squared is 0, like we said. The left most element always leaves. 17x minus 5x is 12x, and this is 6. So let's divide again. 12x over 2x gives you 6. That could already agreed. 6 times 2x is 12x. 6 times 1 is 6. That is exactly the same. So subtract your answer must be 0. Meaning this is my quotient. So as you could see, there was no real reason for us to continue solving. We had already gotten our answer even before getting to the end of the question. Okay. And I'm going to take one last question on polynomials. Just one more, and we shall call it quits with this topic. All right, for our ninth example, this one is from the year 1998, question number eight. And it says, when the expression pm squared plus qm plus one is divided by m minus 1, it has a remainder of 2, and a remainder of 4, which is divided by m plus 1. That means this same expression is divided by m plus 1, the remainder becomes 4. We have to find the values of p and q, respectively. I know this might want to appear tricky, but don't panic. Now, I have my expression. I have two things that divide it, and they both have remainders. What that tells me is that these two are not actually factors of it. If they were factors, I would simply multiply them together, and I must get my expression. But since they are no factors, what can I do? Well, let's start with n minus 1. n minus 1 equals 0. That must mean we are testing with m equals 1. Of course, I need it has a remainder. Instead of getting equal to 0 when I put 1, and this must be equal to 2. So put 1 into the expression. That gives me p into 1 squared plus q times 1 plus 1 equals to not 0, but the remainder, which is 2. 1 squared is 1, so 1 times p is p. q times 1 is q. Let's take this 1 to the right-hand side. 2 minus 1. So p plus q equals to 1. And obviously, I cannot solve this more than this. So I'll call this equation 1. Okay, so I'm done with m minus 1. Let's try m plus 1 now. m plus 1 equals 0. And therefore, m must be equal to minus 1. And just like before, I'm going to put minus 1 into the expression. That gives me p 
times minus 1 squared plus q times minus 1 plus 1 equals to the remainder, which is 4. Minus 1 squared is 1. 1 times p is p. Plus times minus here is minus. q times 1 is q. Then um, equal to 4. Take plus 1 to the right, minus 1. And then p minus q equals to 3. And this would be equation 2. So you see, right now I have two equations already. And that must be simultaneous equations. Two unknowns, two equations. If you don't know how to solve this, please go back and check out the video on simultaneous equations. But for now, let's see. This is going to be p plus q equals to 1. Let's eliminate. Because these p's are the same, I don't have to multiply. I can just subtract easily and say p minus p, 0, eliminated. But yeah, I'll be having minus q, minus times plus, minus q, equals 3 minus 1. Minus q minus q is minus 2q. 3 minus 1 is 2. Over minus 2, over minus 2. And q must be equal to minus 1. Now, again, just like I always said, don't over solve. Let's check our options. They say we should find the values of p and q respectively. That means q should be my later answer. Now, I'm going to write down the options here so I can look at them together. A says 2 and minus 1. B says minus 1 and 2. C says 3 and minus 2. And D says minus 2 and 3. Now, obviously, I can tell that my q should come later. So I know I want to be saying minus 1 over here. How many options have minus 1 here? Just option A. So is there any reason for me to actually proceed to solve for P in an exam condition? No. As soon as I see that Q is minus 1, I stop because there is no way my answer will not be option A. That's just the idea. You don't have to stress yourself. Because even if you continue, now you cannot say, okay, P plus Q equals to 1, like equation 1 says. But Q is minus 1. So that would be 1. Take this minus 1 to the right. Plus 1. That's what? 2. Still the same answer. So once you are solving and you've already gotten part of the answer, always have a look at your options to tell if that answer is the only one like that in the options. If that is the only one like that, then there is no need to finish. You already know your answer instantly. All right? So let's not stress ourselves in exam conditions. Or waste our own valuable time and then complain later on. No. Once you've gotten part of it, always check your options to verify if that is all. Okay. So that was our last example, which means, as usual, it is time for assignments. So try this one out and see how well you will perform. So, okay, now 1999, question 17. And as usual, please remember, when you solve these questions, try to comment your answers below this video. If you are correct, we will definitely write you know. And if you are wrong, if you are wrong, we will try to point out where you might have made your errors and steps you should take to make sure you arrive at the correct answers. So try these six out, and you shall find yourself well-grounded in polynomials. I want to thank you very much for watching this video. Remember to subscribe to this channel so as to be able to see other videos explaining different topics, not just in mathematics, but no, pretty much every subject you shall require when taking your jam. Also remember to get your Ultra Schools Jam app and activate it. My name is Athanasius. Thank you very much for watching.